so in there. Oh. Cool, cool. Welcome to another episode of the Opinionated Podcast. We are here. What's going on, family? We have a guest with us today, man. You, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? You already know, man. It's your boy Amari J, man. You know, entrepreneur, singer, songwriter, activist. We out here, man. Shout out to y'all too, man. Appreciate you, appreciate you, man. Now you hit us up, man. You say you from um, you from Cali, man. We from Jersey, like there's two different. When I tell people I'm from Jersey, the first thing they think about is these buildings and and this crazy looking industry. I'm in the woods and stuff like that. You and Cali, like man, can you explain what Cali life is like with you growing up and how Cali really is? Yeah, man, Cali is it's crazy, man. It's you know it, it's. It's 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 a lot of stuff going on out here, man. But you know, it's it's one of the homes of entertainment. So that's that's the biggest thing about California. Um, if you ask me, right? It's just you know one of the homes for entertainment and media. Um, a lot of you know things like that, and I guess you know technology. Okay. So you 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 originally from Cal? What part of Cal are you from? Originally from? Uh, I'm from the Bay Area. Yeah, I'm from okay. the Bay Area. Um, so I'm I ain't from no LA. You know what I mean? Okay. But, yeah, I'm from the Bay Area, man, you know. Shout out San Francisco, Oakland, you know, Richmond. Okay, okay. From the okay. yay. Yes, so he's, dropping, he's dropping shit, man. I always so, wanted to travel to the West Coast, man. So yeah. so what was it like growing up in the in the Bay? Because I know a lot of people say the Bay is more, you know, Black Panthers and everything, youth like that. Because hey, when we see Cali or California, the first thing we think about is, Oh man, it's crazy gangs out there. It's crazy yeah. gang vibes. It's the only thing that pops up in our head on the East Coast. But I heard the Bay is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, the Bay, man. Um, it's it's a it's a cool community, man. It's you know it's it's a real place of real people. You know what I'm saying? You know, versus L.A. You know, like I said, that's where all the entertainment at. But we not where all the entertainment at though. We dig what I'm saying? You know, so it's more real out here, man. And um, you know. It's it's just a lot of positive things going on. Oakland, yeah, they had the Black Panther movement, um, but still to this day, it's a lot of good things going on in Oakland as far as trying to help the youth. Um, you know, it's a lot of violence too, but it's a lot of good things in place for that as well. So, you know, shout out to all the organizations in Oakland, California, nonprofits, uh, Black ownership that's out there doing their thing, man. I salute my uh, hat off to all of them, man. You already know. <laughs> you dig? Nice. Word. So... Why don't, you, why don't you break down what what you, what you do right now? How you got into it? Yeah, man. So you know, um, I do a lot of things. You know, I'm a I'm a businessman, entrepreneur. But um, really, um, right now, I'm focusing on you know a lot of youth stuff. So uh, basically, um, I say around 2019, you know, um, when Nip died, um, some some people had already you know some of my homies had already showed me his music a while ago you know he was buzzing you know people knew who nipsey hustle was um but then when he died and i already seen like the marathon and what he was standing for but you know when he died that's when i really really seen the impact you know like even some of his closest homies were saying in the interviews like i took it for granted you know what i mean i didn't know you know, but I was always trying to get to Nip. So, like, I, I got to Black Sam, his brother. Shout out Black Sam for showing me love. You know what I mean? Um, we had a good conversation. He took my music. And, um, you know, I was trying to get to Nip after that. And I knew I was going going to get to Nip after that. But, um, you know, unfortunately, what happened happened. So, ever since then, you know, I, I got into some trouble with law enforcement. Same time that Nip died. So, that just turned me into a whole nother person. I was like, I'm taking life for granted out here, man. It's time to make a change and, you know, help the community and um, really carry on this marathon. That's that's the main thing. Carry on this marathon, get a youth some hope. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. I, I know it affected everybody differently. Like, um, I, I, I listen to Nip's music and I, and I really fuck with his message. And um, over here, it affected people, but out there, like even in the Bay Area, like when, when that happened, like what, what was what was the feeling like in the town? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, was it was it a little bit more heavy on people or was it, for lack of better words, kind of just another death? Man, nah, man, it, it, t- California took it hard, man. We took mm-hmm. it hard, man, out here in California, man. Uh, it was it was messed up. Honestly, um, I never seen an effect like that in a long time. Um, and the whole California kind of coming together because, like I said, Bay Area and LA, a lot of people think 
California, you know, we all together. Now nah, we not all together. And, you know, L.A. and the Bay look like to two totally different places. We ain't got all them palm trees and stuff out here. It, you know, it ain't none of that going on. So ain't no bloods and crips out here. Um, it, you know, they on the outskirts in the other Bay, but they not. We not doing that in the Bay. That's not our culture. Um, so seeing even people in the Bay, just I seen a whole bunch of people slide out. You know what I'm saying? As soon as. You know, it went down, stuff like that, sl sliding out to L.A. as soon as possible, going to Crenshaw to show love and show support. Like, I seen a lot of people from the Bay go, so I was like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Nip touched all these people, you know, including me, you know. Um, but it was a lot of people who I didn't think would go, um, you know what I mean? And they they went ahead and went. So it, it really took a real hit on the whole California man. And, and honestly, I think that was uh, California's biggest loss. Um, you know, since a Tupac or something like that. Word. Damn, damn. I mean, that's that's real, man. Because you, like you saying, like Oakland's. I, like I, like I listen to some Oakland music. I listen to Barry music. I like, you know, everybody. Most of us heard short back in the day. E forty. Um, yep. Fuck, I fuck with G Easy a little bit there, here and yep. there. So y'all can hear even in y'all music is like it's two different two different things the terminology and everything like that man so for y'all to all that come like try to come together bring the you know bring the west together that's a good thing unfortunately it's sad that it had to take somebody dying to do that man yeah so yeah it was it was unfortunate and shout out to all them artists man um yeah that was the most unfortunate situation um but you know it uh it, it inspired a lot of people at the same time so you know um if you took something from Nipsey, if you took something from this marathon, roll with it, go hard with it. It's cool, cool. Yeah. So, so, so let's 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 get into you, man. What is some of the like? What are the, some of the things you got actively going on right now to you know help steer the youth and and put them in the right direction? Because right now it's like it's on all coasts. It's like these the, the youth is getting wild. It is out of control. You know, a lot of people getting killed and murdered you see in the music all the time man rappers is dropping left and right that are at the age of you know 2023 and shit for sure uh for sure yeah not nah, for sure um and it's a tragic situation and that's another thing that probably opened my eyes too you know uh i, I was a fan of artists like mo threes and, and artists like Briss. so you know just also seeing them go out it's just like and they all young it's like you know um man we got to do something about it. So basically I said, um, I'm going to put my best foot forward and um, I'm going to attack one of the biggest problems right now. And, uh, you know, I put myself out to the um, to these people in these school districts like, hey, I'm trying to help these kids. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, put them in the right direction so that they don't make the same mistakes I made in life or worse. Um, and me being an influence as far as a um, music artist and stuff like that in my life and what I've been through, I feel like... Um, it could really help them. So uh, they, they gave me a shot. And um, ever since then, I've been at multiple school districts, um, speaking to the kids, you know, trying to motivate them, trying to steer them in the right direction. But then I started my own, my own shit, and it's called Voice of the Youth. So Voice mm -hmm. of the Youth, it's, it's, everybody think it's like me saying I'm the voice of the youth, but I'm just giving y'all the voice as the youth. This is you, this is y'all, this is for you. So um is voice of the youth just saying like this is their voice and I'm, I'm putting them on a platform to give them that so we got a lot of different things with that mentoring um sports um let's see uh uh liaison type of work uh trying to you know get the parents um uh, the school staff and and the kids to understand each other um community work um backpack drives toy drives um we got a lot of good things going on. We working on a podcast too, Voice of the Youth. I'm gonna let the kids run that, but I uh, I got a lot of other business ventures I do. So um, we work with other nonprofits. We work with uh, we got you know meetings with city council. We in talks with a lot of people. Um, we got um, a lot of school districts on our side, um, and um, a lot of superintendents and and people that's in high places and people that's in low places. So. We just trying to put it all together, but um, our main goal and main objective is to say the youth and say these kids, man. And uh, like I said, you know, along with uh, Nipsey Hussle's um, motivation and inspiration to take it to the top and um, continue on that same legacy. 
Yeah. Ask you a question. Like, I, like I grew up. I, I'm I'm in the grew up in the era in the '90s, man. And I remember like the officers would come in there, and the dare program dudes would come in there, and they would talk to us, and we'd be playing around, and we didn't act like we want to hear the message, and we, you know, it's like it was like going in one ear and out the other, but it'd be dudes on the block that you know pretty much be kicking the same knowledge, trying to keep it on a straight path, like. And I more or less listen to them, you know, trying to do the right thing by life, man. Like, do you, that's how, you, do you approach that shit? Like, like you give them life lessons, that stuff you went, you went through in life that try to help them move them along and get them to listen a lot better. Cause you know, kids, man, you know, the attention span always ain't always on positive things most of the time. Right, 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 right. And that's where, um, that's where the, uh, the music career come in. That's where. I, you know, I got the negative for you to see, you know what I'm saying? I, I got, I could show you where I came from and, and what I, you know, what I am now. Uh, so the difference between me and a person like that is they don't, they don't have, they don't have their life out here for the world to see it. You could go see my life. You could see I, I was in the hood. You could go see I was doing this and doing that at, at a point in my life. And I ain't doing that no more. You get what I'm saying? So it's a, it for me, it's worked so well because it's a prime example. I'm a prime example um, for these young black men. And uh, when they see me, most of the time they see they self, bruh. And um, I know it, you know what I'm saying? And um, um, I, I, you know, I look like, you know, some of their favorite artists, like, you feel me? I'm not too far off as far as like some of the things I got going on, some of the people I worked with, um, all of that is inspiring. So, um, you know, I'm blessed to even do what I've done because it's a lot of people that want to be uh, doing what I've done. So um, I take that now and use that into a positive, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, I still make rap music. I still do this and do that. It's all entertainment. But at the same time, you got to keep some negativity to balance out the positivity. I don't necessarily yeah, consider rap, but I don't necessarily consider rap. Uh, negative but some people like all the way it depends you know but um everybody got their different perceptions some people might just consider all rap negative but that's where you lock them in you get what i'm saying so mm -hmm. um it, it, it's it's all a, a mind trick and a mind game too at the same time oh hope we didn't lose them no somebody probably called him no no what what he was um hopefully he comes back but what he's saying about rap speaking rap music it's yeah, speaking on the rap negative but rap music wasn't everybody always think rap music is negative sometimes you can hear really over the top negative shit that's just like yo this is shit is just it makes no sense or they just why they're killing the whole world but you can hear some people that have rap songs that's basically just telling you what they what they every day Everyday life is what they went through in the hood, man. Give like you an opportunity to look at things through their eyes and their perception. Yeah, we you we seen shit. Like all of us have seen shit. Like like somebody said, we hood we we were hood adjacent. Like we seen stuff in the hood and we was adjacent to that shit. Like so we seen what really goes down in the hood. We if I was a rapper about it, you'd be looking at me like, man, that's bullshit or or that's crazy. You can't see, you could how could a little kid see all that shit? I'm like yeah. It's a lot of kids in, in the hoods that see a lot worse shit that I've seen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So for him to come out, try to, you know, do a good thing and pump a message and, and he's, you know, for these kids to, to help him along is, is a good thing. And by him doing music, it helps it out. Like, oh, this is a cool dude that's telling me that. Because like I said, when the dare cop came to my school, he was telling me about not selling drugs. I did not give a fuck about that dare cop. You want to know why? Because he don't look like me. Not you can't yeah you, you can't you, it's hard to relate exactly it, yeah. it it's easier for you to receive a message from someone when you see them living your lifestyle or have lived your lifestyle you can assimilate some of the things that you've gone through to the things that they've gone through yeah and yeah. and when you start being able to get advice from someone who actually knows what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to you specifically you're it's 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 more. Yeah. Uh, capable for it to be adhesive to your mind. Yeah, the you dude, know what man, I mean. Bro, my, when the, my, when the, when my phone, the, there you go. Heated, 
My bro, my phone overheated, bro. My bad, bro. That's I, I forgot you. Like <laughs> you, that, you you out in that Cali sun. Yeah. Now we were just yeah. so <laughs> today is a heat wave. Today is a heat wave, y'all. And I'm tripping. I'm like, let me just hop in here, bro. Nah, oh, we, yeah. good. Air we, we were just expounding on what you were saying <laughs> yeah. about uh help using the negativity to create positivity. Yeah, because I was just know. I was just I was just saying like when the dare cop spoke to me, I didn't give a fuck. But when a dude was on the corner hustling and he would tell me, like, yo, you don't want to be out here. I'm like, and I'm like, yo, why are you out here? You getting money. He's like, yo, I ain't got no choice. Like, he like, go ahead, bro. Get off this, get off this corner before I tell your grandma you out here. You ain't supposed to be out here with us. The capability of being able to relate. Yeah. And you, someone, you, someone knowing you. I mean, that man knew your grandma. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. cop ain't know nobody in your family. He trying to tell you. A reason not to do stuff and it's so yeah. you don't go to jail and it's like nah. nah and but the dope boy told me like yo i got no choice but to do this like you got a choice like this ain't easy money i'm getting right now this ain't right. easy money you see i'm out here every day this ain't yeah. easy money so said, get out of here I, I got a question for you um how did you find yourself in the position to be able to provide this opportunity for the youth now um honestly man uh i, I always wanted to get into something of that nature but i thought it was you know gonna be when i was older you know mm -hmm. i don't know 45 50 plus right you know or, or mm. you know be a pastor or something like that i wanted to change my life around you know period um uh, you know also charlie wilson shit you feel me yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know but um i said man nip just died all this going on nip was doing it i mean i ain't got what nip got but, but why not do it now Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Why not just do it now? Um, and and the game didn't. I didn't. I didn't choose the game. The game chose me. Mm. Or, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so ever and since I, I seen the positivity from it all, the mothers, you know, all the people that you know say good things and and really say I'm helping their kids. After I seen all of that, I'm like, okay, uh, I will go ahead with it. Okay. And, and I think that speaks to legacy in, in general. And uh, for me, that's, you know, that's, that's kind of where this conversation is going. And uh, like Nip left a legacy, like regardless of what happened, it was, it was definitely fucked up. Um, but legacy and right. taking that legacy and pretty much starting your own legacy. Cause somebody going to see what you're doing and say, you know what? He inspired me to do my thing too. And now I want to help. Cause that's really what it's all about. You know what I mean? Right. I think some people are called to do those things. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree. You know what I mean? Even 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 with the rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, it's all that. It's, it's getting the message out there and hoping the right people hear it and hoping they take it and do the same thing. Just my that shit's a gift. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? I Being able to 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 steer a group of people and you know what I mean in in a direction and bring positivity and show the light in the darkness, you know what I mean? How you can be one thing and turn into something else. You know, it's always a rose in the concrete and you gotta be able to show that and see that you can overcome a lot of these obstacles that's out here. They made to keep people like us down. You know what I mean? It's made to put us in positions where we can't be on top, but we are that chosen people. So there's nothing that we can't overcome. And being able to to express that to people who see nothing but darkness, and and show them away, that's a fucking gift. Man, no, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Ah, uh, man, that hit me right there. You, yeah, that's some real shit, bro. Real talk, real talk. Yeah. So that's what we gonna continue to do. You know what I mean? Quick question. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 28. Okay. Cause we we three old niggas, so I'm trying to make sure that we ain't old, <laughs> olding you up too much. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah, you did. This nigga talking about the nineties and shit. I just that's the era I grew up in. I thought y'all was my age. Ain't gonna lie. Nah, nah, nah. nah. We grew up. We grew. Up. I'm eighties. Yeah, I'm eighties. We eighties. We all over here. We eighties. I'm, I'm just young looking. Yeah, we like I said. <laughs> what you what you doing with the rap is and rapping and doing giving back to community, man. I hope a lot more dudes would get on that note because real shit, that's what rap really was about back then. Like, rap was really... It was storytelling, It was bro. a story. It was a give people that don't live in the hood a window into the hood, mm -hmm. but it also 
what you doing, they got money to go back to their community and give back, you know what I'm saying, which is a which is a good thing. Like you've seen a lot rappers used to come back to their hoods and big up their projects. You know, like, take some of their homies out. Biggest one out of the out in the Bay Area, MC Hammer. People yeah, sleep on Hammer. Out. Yeah, shout out. Shout out. Man, he was the he was the dude too. Yeah, shout out MC Hammer, man. Yeah. I'm trying to meet him. Yeah, pe- people don't I realize mean, Hammer used to, to Hammer, Hammer used to take the whole I would love to hear some of them. Games he used to take his stories. whole hood, like his whole hood traveled with him. A lot of people. I know, oh, yeah. He was the yeah. Them stories true, bro. He was. Man, I know that's so. what I want. I want to hear. I want to hear some of the shit that he he hasn't told yet, because the stories that I hear about him running up on people is crazy. Can you imagine? I mean, when we looked at Hammer when we were young, we seen positivity and pants. That's what. That's what I saw. Hammer oh, dance, hammer pants, you know what I mean? And <laughs> you got to pray. You know yep. what I mean? Right. <laughs> you got to pray just to make just it to make today. It to yeah. But what he was really saying was, nigga, you better pray that you make it today or I'm coming over there. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I'm rolling nah, the, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. the thug nah. came out of hammer. Nah, and, hammer, and hammer better did pray. It right. Hammer did it. Because I'm think- pulling up. Hammer, Hammer was pulling up on people. I know that, but Hammer did it he the was. right way. He spread a positive message, but this is a dude from the hood. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And Look I, at Jay thinking. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's yeah, y'all, yeah, you wild, <laughs> yeah, you wild, yeah. Wild, um, yeah. But I tell wild. you, let's get back. This is when, when, when it comes when it comes to that, um, and I'm I'm totally going to throw a grenade and go the left the other way because we was going going one way. Go ahead. So when it comes to to your movement right now. Yes, right. sir. And that's what rap and that's what even with the kids, because I, I really think that's important. I really think that's dope. I like right. to see where people like where what you think about the future. Like, where do you see it going? Because I know I know you said your goals, you kind of w- went over them a little bit. But where would you see your movement going in five years? Like, what would be success to you in five years? Opening up uh, uh, my first um, location, like um for for my merch and um you know maybe having some youth stuff to do with that you know uh like it's a lot of ideas i got man i'm trying to put them all together where it's like we'll even be able to help the kids get jobs and 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 create their own clothing lines or create whatever they want to create and also Mm. get get a a studio access you know so i I need a a a building and i'm gonna put all that in there so if i could do that in the next five years get a get a nice size building uh, get the right people involved. Uh, get a music center in there for mm. for these kids to be able to record music. Let's keep them out the streets. We got to give them something to do. They ain't got nothing to do. I'm looking at the kids right now d- during this summer. They ain't got nothing to do. You know mm. what I'm saying? Let's give them something to do. And then uh, let's see the uh, you know maybe somewhere we could like you know have a little basketball session football session you know close to a park dang near had that close to a park bam use the park you know what i'm saying uh and and dang near have it close to a ymca too you get what i'm saying so i got a big vision but like have it be a mentoring center too like you know uh like i said close i need a clothing like i, I need the building kind of kind of big so that i could have you know like how they got one building and they got different numbers of the addresses mm-hmm. yeah kind of okay. like that Kind of like that. Had a music part in this section. Had a other part in this section. Get what I'm saying? Uh, 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 a strip, like oh, not a strip mall, but a, a, a off like office space. Uh, office space. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and and that ain't it. I'm, I'm I need to get in contact with senators. I need to get in contact with the with with politicians. I need to get in contact with uh city yeah. councils. I mean, I'm in contact with some of these people, but I need more build more relationships with these people and and really get these people to get on my side and and feel my vision which some of them is but i i need i need it bigger just keep on expanding and making it bigger and bigger because after that it's pretty much autopilot from there i i I know what to do Mm, okay how important would you say because i I hear everything you're saying and it honestly inspires me as well like thank you absolutely and and i feel like Kids need somebody to make them feel like it's possible. Right. Because you got, you know, like I heard this quote one time that says, you know, have a dream so big that, you know, everybody that you want to help 
I'm still here. Everybody that you want to help can fit inside of it. And that's what that sounds like. You know what I mean? Don't dream small, dream big. So everybody that you want to help can fit inside of it. How many, how many, how, how important is it to be that? How important is it to you to be that person to these kids, to let them know that this is possible, right? You know what I'm saying? And they can do it as well. How, how important is that to you? That's probably one of the most, excuse me, that's probably one of the most important things to me, to be honest with you. That's like one of the biggest things I need to happen and I want to happen and got to happen is, and I try to get these kids all the time is hope and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I get, I give my last dollars to if, it, if it's a kid that needs some food, like I'm not going, you know, so. I say that that's like the most like one of the most important things, to be honest, because you got to stay motivated. You got to stay inspired out here, because if you don't believe in yourself, it's going to be hard for you to accomplish anything in life. Mm -hmm. um, and some people don't know their value. I always preach that. You know what I mean? You got to understand your value, because I tell half these people, uh, whether they kids, teenagers, <laughs> whatever the situation is, if a rela relationship problem, whatever, you're not valuing yourself enough. That's why you letting you, yourself go through that at the same time. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. we got to know our value and we ain't going to go for certain shit. Damn. Mm. Damn. That's some real shit. You got to yeah. know your value, yo. You Damn. really got to know your value. Is That's an important. Yeah, yeah, yo, that's an important. That's, that is an important yeah. deciding factor on how you move forward, knowing what you're capable of, what you bring to the table and, and how valuable you are. And then you got to be able to show that to others, make make your value show. You right. know what I mean? And I being agree. able to to speak to others. Like I said, that shit is I said it before. That shit is a gift and it brings value to you. You know what I mean? You're not just some person who's out here just rapping, talking about shit that you've done in the past. It's, there's there's hundreds of thousands of rappers who do the same thing. You know what exactly. I mean? Trying to make it, exactly. trying to make it. There has to be something that separates you. From all of these people, yeah, I've done this. I'm do. I've done this. I've done that. This is what I'm doing now, and I want you to be able to do this too. And I'm gonna give you the blueprint on how. And I'm still young, so as I'm working through this, you are gonna see how to work through this as well. You might yeah. not take the exact same path, but you're gonna know the right direction. That's value in itself. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I, I agree. That's my third on that. That's some real shit right there. <laughs> it's it took me a long time, bro, to learn to learn what you learned. A long, already. long time. Like, Yo, we 40. I'm 40, put, 40. No, 40 though. He, so, you um, about to be fucky. <laughs> I ain't 40, man. I ain't got, I ain't got a four in my shit. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I ain't you feel me? Don't fast forward, man. Yeah. Three and a nine. That's it. But, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't learn any of that. Any of the things you're talking about, it took me to basically till I was like 35. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like you got a crazy leg up. And I, I talk about mission now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? What my mission in life is. And yeah. what I feel like God has given me to, to my gift to give to the world, which I, I would say, like I said, is creating and helping other people create. If you could quantify everything you're doing now into a mission, what would that mission statement be? First of all, let me say that I'm doing this because of them. Word. I, I want to say that Nip gave me the knowledge to do all of this, you know, and I don't even know this man. That's how mm -hmm. crazy that is. But as a music artist, it's different because I'm a real artist. I make R&B, I make rap and I make pop music. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll do an EDM song. People ain't got genres like this popping out. So my creativity is another level. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So yeah. when I, so music is going to inspire me and and music artists, they life or whatever inspire me. I don't do I never did drugs in my life. I never drank alcohol a day in my life. I smoke weed, but I ne never drank alcohol a day in my life. You feel me? That's on some family shit. But you feel me? Yeah. The reason I ain't never did drugs is because I looked up to Whitney Houston. I looked up to Bobby Brown and I mm -hmm. seen they downfalls. You feel me? So. Right. Then looking up to Nip, that's what made me be like, okay, let me go in this lane and expand my mind. Looking at man, Nip, Nip changed my life, bro. So I want to say that's what uh really, and I'm gonna keep saying that. You feel me? And that's what uh got me to the mindset I'm in. Now, my bad. Back to your question. Can you ask me one more time? What would you say? Which uh, that was dope, by the way. Like I, I feel what you're saying because that's like your driving force. 
um, which up. we need that. We need that no matter what. What's what up? would you say you're, if you could quantify everything you're doing right now, um, which sounds like a closing question, but it's really not. I'm just very curious. What yeah. would you say your mission statement would be to quantify everything you're doing? Like your mission. To, to be a man of God, uh, build a better relationship with God every day. Mm. Um, um, to inspire others. Um, I read a book one time. You know, they said the greatest. Uh, it was it was a book that Nip read. It was and it said uh, the greatest thing you could do in life is inspire others. So I was, uh, you know. And I've been doing that through music already, without without the without the uh, positivity. Now we put okay. the positivity into it. My whole life has changed. Everything been better, you know. As, as just being a rapper versus being a rapper and doing all this, everything been better. My whole life been changed around into a positive direction. So just showing other people that they could do it too, giving these kids hope, helping these kids, saving these kids, getting them out the streets, getting them, getting them to a better life, man, and just a better understanding for their own understanding. You know, I'm only one person. I can't save everybody, but, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm trying to save as many as I can. So I, I would say that, man, and uh, just be just doing what God sent me here to do, and um, that's what I feel I'm here to do, man. Damn. Yeah. That's, I God's like that, word. bro. All the things, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I All that. Talk, man. Real talk, man. man Real listen, talk. bro, I want to speak on uh, – Speak on your music, man. I want to speak on uh, when did you get started doing music, like, and how was you introduced to it? Yeah, that's a that's a good one. I always like that type of question, man, because it brings me back to my childhood. Um, but as a as coming up, you know, as a youngin out here, man, you already know though in the Bay, you gonna hear a lot of type of music. But um, my family, they was really on on R and B. You feel me? I come from a real black household. So R&B all day long. You feel me? Soul music mm -hmm. all day long. Uh, all of that. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I knew. And um, I loved it. And and that they're coming into my, the artists that inspired me for real, like going back to the new edition and the, mm -hmm. and the Jackson 5. That's when I said, well, well dang, these, these are kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try this out too. So I'm talking ever since I was a kid. I've been trying to, you know, be on some like little Jackson Five New Edition type type of shit. So as time went on, I say about middle school, that's when uh yeah I start uh, the internet. You know, you start experimenting with the internet, and I'm like, okay, you can make songs. Then they got MySpace. You okay? You got uh, mixed craft and all this YouTube beats or whatever beats you going. I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna try to put a song together. So bam put some songs together, put a song together. And I'm like, oh, I like this. You feel me? But the, I'm like, the quality ain't good. But I'm like, it's whatever, though. I'm just going to do my thing. So I made, like, a few little, you know, bullshit albums in the garage type shit. And uh, <laughs> uh, like I say, high school, then, then, see, I was just singing all the way up until, like, eighth grade. Then I made my first rap song in eighth grade off of D-Lo, uh, No Ho Beat. You feel me? Because uh, Young Kurt. Yeah, they did this no ho song or whatever, man. And um, it's a big song for the Bay. It's just like one of the Bay's top records type thing, right? So yeah. everybody getting on this beat, remixing it, you feel me? So I, bam, get on and I rap on there. And instead of singing, that was my first rap song. Everybody was like, man, we rocking with it. But see, I didn't like to rap, you feel me? Still mm -hmm. to this day, I don't really care about rapping, you feel me? I like okay. to do R&B, you feel me? But I just do, I do what the audience wants. Okay, that's, you feel me? I'm a real entertainer. This is what y'all want. I'm going to give y'all what you want. You get what I'm saying? But then y'all going to have to come mess with what I, what I want too. You get what I'm saying? The R&B, the youth stuff. So uh, I, when I got my first song with uh, some Bay Area names, Young Gully, NHT Boys, Birch Boy, Bari, and then uh, Ray J. That's when it got serious. Word. In 2013, that was my senior year of high school. Once I got all that, that's when it got serious. Okay. Dropped my I first yeah. So how was it work? How was it working with Ray J? Like, if I guess like that'd be as superstar to anybody, regardless. You you knew that's like, yo, this is, Ray J. this fucking Ray J. This brand yeah, yeah, for so sure, for so. Sure. <laughs> shout out Trey. I always got to shout out Trey for that one. Uh, he dated my uh auntie for a long time. 
when he moved back to Vegas, he already was in the industry, but he had had a song that he wrote and he produced for Ray J and Ray J recorded and they ain't never did nothing with it. So uh, he was like, man, come down to the studio. I'm going to have you meet Ray too. I'm like, yep, it's good. So he flew me out to Vegas. I did my verse. He put the song together or whatever. He just let me have a song. You feel me? He was like, it's good. Yeah, because he, you know what I'm saying? He already knew, like, you know, Ray J ain't going to be promoting this song probably, so you could just have it. Do, do what you do with it. And he didn't know what I was going to do with it. That's all I needed. You right. feel me? Yeah. <laughs> Go crazy with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so That's shout crazy. out Ray J for that, too. He probably don't even remember on my mama. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> it was a wild I don't know him, but I would imagine. He'll see him. He'll see him. Like, oh, yeah. Night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In it Vegas, too. It was a wild too. night, man. Yeah, In yeah. Vegas, too. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah well, talk about it, though. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was, it, I would go... I really, really go in, but I ain't. I, I respect everybody, man. You feel me? I got love for Ray J and what he doing now, and he helped me out in my life, man. So I, I never uh put his business out there, but it was wilding out. That was back in 2013, like I said. You know, Ray J back then, not Ray prime. J now. Like that's prime Ray J. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was Styles P and Ray J, real nigga stuff, real nigga. Uh, era. Uh, and I know my name, Amari J. Y'all probably like, y'all, you done stole your name for right now, bro. Uh, my last name. I didn't even put that together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't put it together. I just had to say it. Now, my, my last name start with a J, but it is crazy that you feel me. Yeah. yeah. Nah, that's just be niggas' names. I don't even be questioning shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nowadays. It's like, no, nah, that's just his name. Yeah. I know, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't but, questioning. Nah, nah. But you know what's another thing? You say you do R&B, but you hate the rap. But you ain't been no like I know I've been noticing like the rap is sounding more and more like the R&B. Like yeah, the rapper is saying and harmonized and everything yep. like that yep. compared to bars. Like you, like that's that's how you trying to move. Like some of your style is like that, or, or nah, like, I ain't even got that style. I'm actually about to just now come out with that. Like I got real rap, you feel me? But I'm about yeah. to, I'm about to actually try to uh, come out with uh some some little dark type shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just see how it go. You know what I mean? I, I man, I'm just saying, man, because that's where that's where's it at now. Like uh, rap, I grew up on. It was like it was. Everybody had bars. Then when you had the R&B cat, the R&B cat made did the hook for you. Uh, you had, you to, put, you had to put the ingredients together. Yeah, it to was. Make it. Now, now the rapper will sing the hook or sing the rap. I think Drake is responsible for that. I blame Drake, but I like Drake. Crazy. I mean, <laughs> Wayne probably, and, it's Wayne and Drake. I'm about to say you. Y'all probably uh, ain't even you don't think it. Missy? Missy? Huh. 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 Missy okay, you say. I said, y'all probably ain't seen an artist like, you feel me, that do that, though, like that. Where it's like, I'm telling you, bro, I got straight rap music. And then I, I'll show you a Chris Brown pop song. I'll show you a Chris Brown R&B one. You get what I'm saying? So I got Draco the Ruler for that ass. I got all, all genres for that ass. You feel me? I never, I never heard of that. Like, even on some, like, I wouldn't even say Uzi, but I'm, I'm a terrible judge of, of any, like, new shit. You know what I'm saying? But I've never heard of somebody going straight rap, like straight rap, pop, R&B, like have it all. Unless you're a writer, then you're just all around. Yep, all I'm around. a writer too, though. I'm a writer yeah, too. Though. All around talented. You can make it all work. Yeah. yeah. So, my bad. What you were saying, though, bro? No, I was just old, saying, some man. Old shit. Some old nigga shit. That was you said. Some old nigga shit. <laughs> Y'all are crazy, bro. <laughs> You know what? You know who I do compare who who is someone who's so, something like that who's in the industry probably, probably won't have really no new shit in a while. But uh Tory Lanez is kind of like that though, like style wise. Yeah. He'll sing, he got he got albums where they're just R and B. He's got yeah. albums where it's just rap, and then he's got albums R and B and rap, some pop joints on there. I mean, yeah. I like his music too. Like a That's a that, but that is a very, very open lane. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be talented in every area of that for it yes. to be a success. You know right. what I mean? That's right. just hard to do. That's the key. It's just right. hard to do. That's why I say, like, I, you know, I, you know, I really don't like rapping. You know what I'm saying? But people like it, and they say I'm good at it or whatever. So I'm gonna do it. You feel me? But like, you know, 
And it, it, I got some songs, you know, that's hits or whatever that that's rap where I'm like, yeah, no, that's a good song and shit. But like, I'm just not. You feel me? I, I that, really, yeah. Go ahead. That's not your. That's not your passion. That's not where your heart is at. Yeah, like being a rapper. That ain't. You feel me? Yeah, I'm an artist though. Feel me, like. I think they last longer. Artists last longer. I don't. Yeah. I, I'm, I would be the first to say it or the last to say whatever. Artists last longer. Versatility. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Because if you know I was I mean? just doing R and B, I don't think I could have survived this long. And if I was just doing rap, I don't think I could have survived this long. So having that mixture and that balance for sure, because it's like I, I'll be on some shit like this. When I get tired of rapping, then I go to the R and B. When I get tired mm -hmm. of R and B, then I go to the rapping. So it's cool, bro. And the motherfuckers who listen to you on the opposite sides of their fan base will ultimately integrate. You know what I'm saying? There's, I don't care what nobody say. There's no person who listens to rap and just only listens to rap. You know what I mean? Oh, you listen up? to some R&B for sure. And as soon as there's a hit that they hear that you got, like, oh, my nigga got a little jaw right here. This nigga can sing too. They start liking that shit. And, and I don't care what nobody say. Niggas love what the bitches love. Yeah, 100%. For sure. for sure. Niggas love what the bitches love because... You got that love making music. Kev, Kev had all the love making mixtapes. So, so nope. look, see, <laughs> he had all the love making mixtapes, uh, man. I, I, man. I, 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 I had one. I just had shit that I man, knew that I would play. I had the car time. I had the chocolate Alexa, factory. Before playlists, <laughs> Kev had cassette tapes. Then it graduated to CDs. Yeah, oh my God, with, with, with <laughs> shit written on them. Man, you know what I mean? Era, man. That era. That's yeah. how old we are. I'm mad about that CD era, boy. Yes. Motherfuckers making money. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we used to trunk. go buy mixtapes on the, in the hood the all the time. We'd go right to the corner where they, they'd be right at the bodegas. They'd be outside selling clothes, mixtapes, all types of stuff. We made that a weekend thing. All the big mics, all the all the so, D blocks. Yeah. So so how do you feel with this new I'm pretty sure you're a streaming artist? Like, how do you feel yeah. with this new streaming thing that everybody has mm -hmm. access to your music, but you don't see a lot of residual like income from it because it's like what they pay like a penny a download or some shit like that, or a penny a play is it's some it's weird number. Yeah, man, it's not cool in that regard, but it is what it is. Um, it's messed up. I, I miss the CD era. I really do. But, that you know, they be trying to shut down a lot of shit, man. So they probably did that shit on purpose, man, to, sh to shut down the industry and, and the market in a way to where it's, like, so saturated and all this and that. And, um, you know, I know how the labels work, you know. And why they putting on so many artists now? It's a whole bunch of artists that signed to Atlantic Records, Sony, whatever label you want to name that you ain't even heard about. You feel me? No. They've been signed for five years and you ain't heard about them one time. You feel me? But you know, I I understand the game and I get it. Um, I I got love and respect for the game for what it did to me for me. So, I, you know, do I agree with the look? I don't I don't got a problem with the strings, but I'm just mad that we had to get rid of CDs. And like, just do that. You feel me? Like, if we had to see these steel type shit with the streaming, all right, I'd be cool. That's crazy because you realize you you in the Bay Area, y'all were notorious for it. That's where Short yep. came selling out the trunk, forty sold out trunk. People yep. don't realize Master P, Master P, Master yeah. P awesome. had it popping in the Bay Area. Bay Area was synonymous for yo. You want to get your shit jumping off? That was me though too. Yeah, yeah, that was me with it. yeah, that was me. Yeah, Word. man, real Bay Bay Area, bro. You already know. You feel me? Like all I was, nigga. I was at high school, middle school. I had CDs, bro. Selling albums, high school, middle. That's how I would eat every day, bro. Like Dang. you feel me? I would eat every day off of this shit. You feel me? Yeah. On my Damn. mama. Yeah. Oh hey. God. I was, on, I, I was early on. I was early on passing my man. Damn near everybody done got a CD from me, bro. You feel me? Early on passing that shit out. Then when Twitter came out, MySpace, Instagrams, I'm hopping on them networks fast as hell. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Damn, you see. Yeah, that yep. CD. That's where the hustle. That's where the hustle began. If, yeah. you, if you knew how to pop them CDs, that's where your hustle really began. But let me ask you this question. But, the, but also, I know streaming has its negative downfalls with with the fucking the, 
the you know the distribution of money, but it got to have a big upside where you can reach a wider range of audience. Like you can you can drop a stream and that shit can be popping in Africa somewhere. And you I like, mean, Damn, yeah, I'm, but I can do that on Instagram. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that's how I look at it too. And you then bring me? the money in. Yeah, money right so, to my hand. Yeah, so it's 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 iffy. You know what I'm saying, but. I mean, it ain't nothing gonna replace that CD shit, man. <laughs> shit, that shit so, was a whole different bag. Whole Black different Sam bag. got one of my CDs. You feel me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> damn. <laughs> See, so, 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 I done so gave what, a CD to damn near everybody, bro, on, on, on Mama, bro. Adam 22 got one, whole bunch of people. Artists I can't name that y'all that y'all know who I want to talk about, but I ain't gonna name these certain people because, you know, publicity reasons. Okay. Damn. They I all got a now. CD, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want to know now, but it's all yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> just, just I was curiosity, man. No, all right, all right. So, so, like, as far as the music thing, you trying to stay independent, or are you on the on you on the label route or the label hunt? I done been on the label route already in the label hunt. I done been signed with Atlantic. I done uh, fell out with Atlantic. I done fell out with Warner Music Group. I done fell out with ADA uh, Distribution. Uh, I done had work with Empire. Uh, shout out to all of them, though. No, you feel me? I don't got no, uh, well, well. you know, ill will towards nobody. It just didn't work out for whatever reason. But um, it was never a problem and nothing like that. Um, I feel like I just didn't get the right person to understand where I was coming from. But uh, mm. I ain't really, yeah, going through all that then taught me, like, um, I don't really need to be concerned about the labels like that. You got to be happy with what you can create in your content. Hey, I got 20,000 people on my Instagram. I'm going to work with what I got. It is what it is. If it get bigger, it get bigger. If it don't, it don't. But I'm still going to continue to do what I do and, and feed my fan base that I got. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. um, uh, if I do want to do a label deal, it'll be a partnership deal down the line. You feel me? But like mm -hmm. this, this youth shit taking off too. So it all might come back together another way. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's going to because when you got when you when you out there doing stuff like that, I feel like it it, it brings the right people to you. The people who understand your vision are more willing to you know what I mean. Like if you, yeah. this is how I feel. Like if you when you go to the labels and stuff like that. I mean, I used to make beats or whatever uh, a long time ago. This is this is you know yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, with the labels, you go to them, it's almost like they're doing you a favor, or they feel like they're doing you a favor. Like, oh, you coming <laughs> to us, we're going, you know what I'm saying? Like a bank. But so, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but when you when you out there and you moving with your vision, that's why I feel like um artists who treat they who treat their um they tr they treat their art more like a company, more like a business. When somebody sees you moving on your own accord, it's like they want to it's like they're gravitating towards you to help you move along with your vision, or at least that's the way you got to see it. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. I forget where I was going with it. I feel like <laughs> I forget where I was going with that, but I think that I just wrapped it up. I forget I, where I was going. With that. I think I you, what you're saying, like you're creating an environment where you get wow. you're gaining your own traction, and they want a piece of you rather than you going to look to them to see, you know, what they could offer. You know, what you can. They're looking at like, what can you offer us? Yeah. But when you're doing your own thing, they come to you and like, well, what can we do for you? That's a whole different type of feeling because now you know you're the boss of the situation. You know what I mean? You're pretty right. much in control of everything from this point forward. You know what I mean? You're right. the one that's making the demands. Exactly. So you get to be like, nah, I'm good with you. You know what I mean? And, that, yep. and the more they see you gaining traction and becoming bigger, they're going to want a piece of that. And they're going will, to be willing to do just about anything. Cause, cause you, like, go ahead. Th that's part of the problem. That's part of the problem why it didn't work out. It was certain things I wasn't willing to do that, like mm -hmm. I said, I can't even speak on. I got too much love for the industry, but it'll blow your mind. Let's just put it that way, y'all. Y'all, y'all wouldn't believe some of the stuff that. Uh... Oh no, I would. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh I oh no, yeah, they, I would. Yeah, Trust yeah, me. Yeah, you in a better position now. You you on a whole different side. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing yeah, so your worth. Knowing your worth. Mm, I agree with y'all. Yep, there you go too. Yep, knowing your worth too. Exactly. It's like you got to be okay and be content with saying, "Okay, I don't." You feel me? I don't need Hollywood. You feel me? Because Hollywood will fuck your ass up. Right. Mm. From what I hear, absolutely, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Period. I do got a. This is gonna be a left field question. Way left field. Who's your Who's your dream collaborator? And I can. And that could mean business, or that could mean 
any song you got, your dream collaborator. Or you could do both. It's up to you. Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, or Nipsey Hussle. Period. Mm. Period. Period. And I'm going to name people that's not here no more because them, them, yeah, them is the people who I would really want to get to for real, for real. And it's it's crazy to me. Like, my favorite artist no longer here no more. You mm. feel me? Not one. You feel me? But, it, you know, it is what it is. Goats. Yeah, that shit's yeah. a hurt piece. I mean, Tupac too, for sure. <clears throat> oh, but yeah. I'm going to name people that's not here. Another goat. Okay. Because them is the people that really inspire me. Like Whitney Houston, bro, I ain't going to lie. You feel me? I got too much love for Whitney Houston, bro. Like, I, <laughs> I done got into fights with people. You know what I'm saying? Be just because they, they want to disrespect her name. And be from you know, be we the same race, but y'all want to call her a crackhead or whatever else. Y'all ain't talking about Elvis Presley though. I don't want to hear that shit, bro. We're not finna tear down our own people, my nigga. But but when the when man, I ain't I ain't even got time to get into that. But when Elvis, you know, was doing his thing, ain't nobody was down in that. Uh, they don't we, yeah. we tear we are the biggest race to tear down our own race every time. It's like it's a funny thing to fucking go kick one of our celebrities. Kick our celebrities in the fucking back, which is crazy. Right. Our black right. celebrities. We ain't it ain't a ain't like it's a bunch of us out there. It's, it's far and few, man. It ain't like they let us all through the door. They try to keep us bottled up into this rap shit and these certain, you know, terrible hood movies. They don't let us like say, yo, we got more sides to us than just what y'all fucking putting out there. We ain't just rappers and all that and and always in these hood movies or or basketball players there's a lot of sides to us man so you're right it's not good to tear us down we shouldn't be tearing each other down from the inside man you're right for on that for so and and i was good friends uh for a minute with uh um one of bobby christina's friends uh whitney houston daughter one of her friends um i can't say no names because she don't want to be out there but um yeah, just want to, you know, put that out there real quick, man. Hope she doing all right, man. Shout out to the Houston family and um, the Nipsey uh, Hustle family. I hope all them people getting through it. Hey, I feel you. Yeah, and, and the Bobby Brown family, too. So we, we're we about to wrap this up. So before we wrap this up, like I said, we want to, you know, we want to know how. First, we want to know, because you said you got music out. For sure. Mm -hmm. You know, drop some of your, your names of some of your albums and, and where could they be found at, man? You know, so they can hear this. Yep, for sure. Go get a, a Mari J tapped in, man. Go get a Mari J. She know uh, tapped in. That's the uh, rap record. She know that's the R&B pop record. Y'all go get the uh, the Mr. Buster Move album, 2023 album, new single with you. Drop this uh, this summer and then Fatal Attraction just drop that album Fatal Attraction 15 17 coming soon y'all already know okay now the merch now you said you had merch you were selling like where up oh, tapped in right here you feel me tapped in y'all see you feel me the tap tapped and then the, the phone right here with the end I, I can't even see how I'm possession nah, you got it, <laughs> nah, we got it. Was, yeah we can see <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. you feel me so yeah but uh tapped in man go get the merch uh tapped in merch that's the instagram name tapped in merch dm that page we doing shipping all that website all that just yeah go on the instagram uh tapped in merch uh go follow the youth program voice of the youth llc y'all already know what time it is man voice of the youth podcast coming soon man and um yeah y'all already know man appreciate y'all man shout out to the opinion opinionated po excuse me. it's all right it's hey, a mouthful man. it's a mouthful <laughs> Shout out to the opinionated podcast, man. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all going crazy out here. Y'all going hard out here, man. You already know. Shout out Jersey and, and wherever else y'all from. You feel me?